All right, what's up, guys? We're back here with another review, and today we're reviewing um, a TV show called Hell on Wheels. Now, this is on the same channel as um, Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, and Breaking Bad. Um, this is on AMC. I'm pretty sure American Horror Story is also on AMC. But this was definitely the show that the least popular out of the four of the show out of compared to the other four shows on AMC. American Horror Story is like uh, Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead and Breaking Bad are all like up there, but I feel like people go over this one a lot. And since this is a TV show, it had five seasons and the last season was in 2016. It did get an ending. It didn't just get canceled and dropped. This show did have an ending. It ended. And it's not because of development issues. They didn't run into any issues. They just ended it on the fifth season. So this show didn't get canceled. And since this is a TV show review with five different seasons, I'm going to be rating the seasons one at a time. Now, I'm going to take it a little bit differently with a TV show. I'm going to rate it um, one through three. One being awesome, perfect. Two being really, I mean, uh, two being good. And three being not well done. So. <sighs> okay, Hell on Wheels. I've taken about the last uh, two or three weeks to uh, watch the entirety of this show. And uh, I tell you, it was an adventure. Starting off with the first season. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire plot of the show. Basically, what this show is, it's about a guy named Colin Bohannon. Uh, a bunch of uh, Confederate s soldiers, uh, the the blue side, not the graybacks, the blue side. Uh, a bunch of Confederate soldiers killed his family, and he's hunting them down, and he eventually starts getting into the railroad business. And uh, it's about joining the two parts of the Continental Railroad, the West and the South, are like fighting each other. I mean, the two sides are fighting each other. It's Thomas Durant, and I forget the other guy's name. But they're fighting each other to uh, drive the last spike in. So. The main thing that when it comes to a show like this, you're going to have a lot of character deaths when it comes to an in-depth story show like this. And that's definitely the case with this one. The first season. I'd give the first season a two because it was a really good season. Good to start off with. But again, actually, I'd give it a one because it was a good ass start to the show. They did good. It was a good, good start. And it showed strongness. So I'm going to give it a one. It stayed strong. Now, there wasn't any significant character deaths. Now, there was one. There was a couple, actually, now that I remember. So the show starts off with Colin Bohannon, the main character, killing uh, one of the people that killed his family. And he shoots him in the face in a confession booth at the church. And it was that, and it happened in the first five minutes of the show, and it shows you. Hey, there's going to be a lot of people that die in this show. Just going to tell you. The other character that died later on in the show is um, was actually the first actual significant character death, which was uh, the foreman at the uh, the foreman at the Thomas Durant's uh, railroad place. So the railroad camp. So Thomas Durant is at the railroad camp and there was this foreman called Johnson and he uh, was one of the people that killed Colin's family. So what happens is Johnson figures out that Colin plots to kill him. So he takes him out behind the camp to shoot him. But then one of the slaves comes up behind him because earlier in this episode, Johnson killed one of his slave buddies. So this uh, slave called Elam Ferguson comes up behind him and slices his neck open. Elam actually becomes a very, very, and that's why I like this show so much. It's kind of like Breaking Bad. They really put, when they want to make a main character, they really put development into him. That's true up until the fifth season 
we'll get to the fifth season. But um, the last real, the last two real interesting character deaths that were actually kind of harmful to the show was uh, in the end of the first season, uh, the preacher ends up cutting off a Confederate soldier's head off. He's like a general or whatever. And I guess he was like the main general throughout this season, so it was kind of shocking that he just got his head cut off. And then there was uh, Miss Bell, her husband. So Miss Bell is a uh, land cartographer for the railroad, and she's camping out, spotting new places to build with her husband, and their camp gets attacked by an Indian raid, and... She is forced to murder an Indian that killed her husband. So her husband dies in this battle. And those are pretty much the only like big character deaths in the first season. I'm going to give the first season a one. Well, I'm going to make it less confusing. I'm going to give it a good or a bad rating. I'm going to say it's good or it's bad. The first season was good. It was good. It kept strong. It was a good start to the show. Second season up, up the game a little bit. Second season really kicked ass. I'm telling you. It, it really... Kick some ass here. You're probably wondering, well, what happened in the second season? Well, the second season is where, all the way up into the fourth season, they made some ballsy decisions killing off some of the characters. I mean, there were some characters in this show that I'm just like, holy shit, they did not just kill that person. And you know what? The second season had a death that seriously affected me. I'll get to him in a minute. So in this season, in the end of the first season, I forgot to mention this. In the end of the first season, Colin ends up killing the last person that killed his family. And he gets tried for murder. So he ends up getting captured by the marshal and Thomas Tramp breaks him out to make him work at the railroad again. And that's the story of the second season. But before all that happens, the reason he gets caught is because um, he was, oh, Robin, Robin trains with this gang or whatever. And there's a bunch of no names in the gang, but the one we want to talk about is the gang leader. The gang leader ends up dying about eight out of ten episodes in this season. He ends up trying to attack the actual railroad camp and Colin ends up getting the better hand of him and... In this season, Elam becomes like the dirty work right-hand man of Thomas Durant that does all the killing for him because Thomas Durant isn't a fighting man, so he needs someone to do the dirty work. And that's Elam Ferguson, the slave from the last season. And he becomes like a bigger character in the show. Real big character development here, but they get the upper hand of him and they drag him out to the cemetery and... Literally, he can't even get his last words and Elam just blows his head off. So he dies. But the one death that got me was Doc's death. Who is Doc? Doc was with uh, the train robbing gang with Colin, but Doc had a bounty on his head and they knew what he they knew what he looked like. Doc was basically like the main character's mentor character of the show. He was basically like Blade's whistler. He was the fucking mentor character, and he was a really cool developed character from the get-go. I really liked Doc from the get-go. He was just nice. He was an old man, and he had a lot of wisdom. Well, what happens is, after they end up, after the leader of the, uh, after the uh, leader of the fucking, oh, the leader of, uh, The train robbing gang ends up getting his head blown off. The marshal, the Confederate soldiers end up catching up with. Uh, also, Ulysses S. Grant shows up in this season. He's about to be elected president at this point. And uh, he takes a big liking to Cullen because he was a soldier before the war. Um, so, main thing is here Doc ends up getting caught, and Cullen is the one that has to blow his head off. So Colin ends up killing Doc. Another interesting character death that I kind of saw coming was uh, 
the Irish Butcher. Now, you're probably wondering what Irish Butcher... He's this minor character that was causing trouble with these two... Uh, I don't think he was Irish. I think he was, like, Swedish or something. I can't... No, he wasn't Swedish. There is a Swedish guy, but it's not him. He was something. And he was having trouble with these other two Irish brothers, Mickey and Sean. Mickey and Sean are basically, like, the playboys. Or, I mean, the the... The gamblers, the high, the high stakes guys of uh, the business, the business dudes of the railroad, and they're pretty big characters. Sean ends up dying later on, but I'll get to that in a second. Mickey's the one. Mickey actually survives the entire show. Mickey's a, one of the main characters. But um, no, they end up having to kill this butcher guy. And ba- and uh, throwing all of his remains into the pig feed. It's a really gruesome death, too. This show has a lot of really gruesome deaths on it. They end up chopping them up into pieces and feeding them to the pigs. It's pretty freaking brutal. But the death that towers above them all in this season, and there's a lot of them, I gotta go with Miss Bell. Miss Bell ends up falling in love with Thomas Durant at the beginning of the first season. And then she leaves him because he's a douchebag. And she ends up falling in love with Colin. The night after she sleeps with him, she decides to steal Thomas Durant's uh, file bo- uh, finance books to get him put in jail. And the fucking railroad camp gets attacked so they call in the cavalry because apparently so there's this swedish guy and they ran him out of town in the end of the first season because he would i mean they ran him out of the camp in the first season because he was uh well he was a douchebag and he was like the marshal of the place and he ends up getting caught up with the uh indians in this season and he becomes their white spirit and he signals this uh, raid on uh, the fucking railroad camp. And he ends up killing a bunch of people. But in the process, he chokes Miss Bell to death right before she's about to put Thomas Durant in jail. She ends up killing her. And it's like a mind-blowing death. Another ballsy death in this the end of the season is Mr. Tool. My God, Mr. Tool. Dude, Mr. Tool was like, I legitimately liked his character. But no, in the end of the season, he uh, ends up finding out that Elam's sleeping with his girl, Eva. And she's pregnant with (coughs) supposedly Elam's baby, but it turns out to actually be his. And you later find out that his death was for nothing. And eventually his brother comes to get the baby, but... No, he blows his head off right in front of his wife because she was cheating on him with Elam. It's a pretty, like, out-of-nowhere death. He's just like, well, I guess this is how it is, and he puts his gun up to the bottom of his head and blows his head off. I mean, it's just like, boom. Like, no hesitation. (laughs) And I'm just like, no! And there was another death in the first season that I forgot to go over, and it was uh, one of the Swedish guy's dudes... He was somewhat of a main character. I mean, somewhat of a side character, and he was had some importance. So he ends up getting shot in the first season. And I think that's it for the second season as to main character deaths that were pretty much all significant. I mean, I can't really think of any others that were, like, really significant. But the other ones that I want to talk about is um, in the third season... Oh, yeah. In the second season, there was uh, the preacher guy ends up getting killed. The preacher guy um, ends up having to get stabbed by his own daughter and murdered by his own daughter. So he took in this, the preacher guy took in this Indian kid as his son. And the preacher guy was really good friends with, well, he was friends with the Indian kid's actual Indian father, but his Indian father lives out in the woods, but this Indian kid wanted to live with normal society and not Indians. So he left his father to go live with this preacher guy. 
And in the end of this season, we he has to be forced to stab his own father to death and kill his brother, his Indian brother and father. And then his preacher dad goes crazy and he has to kill him as well. And that's the last we see of that Indian kid. Now we just got to focus on the preacher lady, which was actually one of my most enjoyable characters of the show. My least favorite character of the show was the Swedish guy by far. I fucking hate that guy. And I cannot believe that he survived. He survived all five seasons and died in like the last episode. He does eventually die, but it's like, dude, he should have died like way earlier. It's like, come on. Oh, God damn it. No, he gets, he ends up getting hung in the first fifth season. The second season was pretty strong. It stayed strong. And you know what? The third season was even ballsier. The third season was better than the second season. The third season was definitely the peak of this show. It had some of the most ballsy decisions. And the fourth season had even ballsier decisions. But this was definitely the peak of the show in quality. Now, the fourth season was really good still. It had some ups and downs, but it was really good overall. Especially towards the end. Holy shit. Some of the shit that happens in the end of that. But the third season, dude, we get character deaths of just some of the most insane characters. Actually, no, the third season didn't really have any significant character deaths that I can remember. No, it didn't. I mean, it had some somewhat important character deaths, but not really. It was more of story development. The fourth season, though. Holy shit. So in the end of the third season, Elam ends up getting attacked by a bear and one of the tooth... I mean, a bunch of, like, the entire upper jawline of the bear's teeth sunk into his head, and he's got, like, brain damage now. And it's one of the most depressing things to watch. This character that was being developed for three whole seasons into this really strong, awesome dude, awesome character, ends up fucking turning into this limped brain idiot, and he's going around trying to sell white, sell white girls as black slaves. It's really sad to watch, and it eventually ends up with him going back to the railroad, and Colin has to put him down by stabbing him in the stomach and then shooting him in the head. It's like the saddest death you'll watch. It's pretty fucking sad. We also get the death of uh, Mickey's brother, Sean, in this season, which is insane because Thomas Durant basically takes Sean and tells him that he's going to give him all this money and stuff, but... He stabs Sean in the back, which forces Mickey to have to kill him so he doesn't give up any of the secrets. So Mickey ends up shooting Sean and killing him. But the one death I want to talk about in the season. Well, before that, let's talk about... um, So in this season, a new character shows up. It's one of uh, Colin's old war buddies. And he ends up getting his leg cut off and died. So he dies in this season. And then there, there's this uh, Mormon kid that ends up showing up in the town, but he's a he's an orphan because he walked out from the wilderness. And the preacher lady, since her father's dead and the Indian kid's gone now, she owns the church. And she's doing sermons and stuff. So she ends up taking this kid in as her own kid. And it's one of the sweetest relationships in this show. And I'm like, wow, this is really good. Well, what happens is Colin's old war buddy decides to uh, go all apeshit crazy and burn down the church with a bunch of the railroad workers in it. And the kid ends up hiding under the floorboards because he's scared about everybody screaming and stuff. And when the preacher lady goes back there, the kid has burned alive under the floorboards. And it's one of the most depressing sh- deaths in the show. And I'm just like, wow. And if that weren't the worst, the guy comes back to town and the preacher lady shoots him in the chest and she gets tried for murder. And since she's a preacher lady, she does not accept the pardon. So she gets hung in the end of the, the season. The, the season ends with her getting hung. It 
is depressing as shit. Oh my god, this one made me shed a tear because she was a legitimately the last character that I legitimately enjoyed in the show. Now the fourth season ended it with characters that we wanted to see die like Thomas Durant and the Swede. Thomas Durant ends up having a heart attack. The Swede ends up getting hung. It's kind of like tying up loose ends. General Custer ends up making an appearance. <laughs> Custer's last stand. <sighs> he ends up making an appearance at the end of the show. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to kill some Indians and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. You're going to do something all right, buddy. Yeah. General Custer. <laughs> I actually legitimately, that made me laugh. When they introduce this character, because he just not he just like not even cares. He's like, "Yeah, we're just gonna go kill some Indians and come home." That made me laugh. It did. I feel like it was a joke in the show too. And that was towards the end of the fifth season. So the fifth season was, eh, it had its moments, but it was still the fifth season was really bad. I it had some satisfying deaths like the Swede. But overall, the fifth season was just like, really? Why? Why? I, 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 everything about the fifth season, just it, it was a drag to get through that because it was so boring. There wasn't really anything like wowing like the other seasons. So yeah, Hell on Wheels. This was a really good show and I highly recommend it, even though the fifth season does kind of drag on a little bit. I'd highly recommend watching the entirety, even the fifth season. So remember to leave a comment, like, and subscribe.